Uh, my name is Raquel Dancho, and I just got elected as a member of parliament in Kildon and St. Paul, which is in the North Winnipeg area. I'm 29. Well, for sure, there's a lot of energy and enthusiasm, optimism for the future, particularly with the millennial generation, we're very outcome focused. But I think the importance of having Parliament really represent all Canadians, which includes the largest voting demographic in Canada, which is the millennial voting demographic, is that we're facing a set of issues that our parents didn't face. So buying your first home, for example, we're well into our 30s before we get our first home, if ever. Climate change, obviously a huge issue for my generation, where taxes are higher, income taxes higher, buying power is less, uh, wages have not kept up with cost of living. And I very much believe that needs to be at the decision-making table uh, when we're talking about policy. So that's uh, definitely part of my motivation of getting to office in Ottawa at 29. I guess to dial it back a bit, I, I grew up in rural Manitoba and then I, I moved to Montreal to attend McGill University, which is very metropolitan, Quebec-based city, it's very multicultural. It was such a culture shock for a little country bumpkin me to go to this big fancy city with all of these different people and with different opinions and it was the first time I think I met like real lefties, I have to be honest. Uh, and I, was, I didn't even realize how um, that I was conservative until I, until I moved there. And yeah, there, there is a significant divide. And I think a lot of it comes down to the urban access and the privilege that that provides people that live in large urban cities, which is fantastic for them. But when you go in rural Manitoba, rural Canada, even in the Maritimes or Northern BC, wherever it might be, there is a disconnect of the issues that affect you every day. The affordability factor goes up massively. Things like carbon tax, totally different communication story when you're talking about someone who has to drive an hour down gravel roads in minus 45 to get to a hospital or to get to school. Well, I think the Conservative Party and in, in our election results um, have given us a huge opportunity to move forward on bringing the country together. Uh, we've elected someone in every region of this country, unlike the Liberal Party. Uh, we represent suburban, rural, urban. We have somebody everywhere. Frankly, being a young person elected to Parliament, uh, I'm full of optimism for the future and I think that's something that's perhaps um, unique to perhaps our more younger members of Parliament in, in many cases and I think that that sort of enthusiasm, that, that pride in our country and, and what we can accomplish moving forward may be just the thing that we need in this sort of divided Parliament that we're walking into in the next couple of weeks. So what's it been like since I've been elected for a couple of weeks now? It's been the most incredible experience of my life. Uh, I don't think you think, no, no one ever talks about this when you're running an election, no one ever prepares you. The committee work and the housework, that's gonna be something I think that sort of baptism by fire, you gotta learn on the fly on that one. They give you sort of a rundown of what that's gonna look like, but really it's just, from what I understand, you're gonna walk in and you're just gonna to have to do the best you can. So I'm quite excited to sit across from the Liberals and hold them to account. I've dreamed of that for many, many years. Frankly, the first thing I thought when I actually sat in one of those chairs was the almost 100,000 people that I'm representing as I sit there. That's my job, to sit there and represent almost 100,000 people in my riding. I'm their voice. From the women that I speak to on the Hill, uh, politics hardens you, it makes you tougher, it makes you really get in there. Um, I think something in our society that women experience very much is, you know, be polite, smile, don't try to ruffle any feathers. And I think if you're going to survive in politics, if you're going to do a good job, number one, for your constituents, which is the reason we're here, you have to be tough and you can't take any crap. And I can't imagine the person that I'm going to be in four years, I think it's going to be someone that you don't really want to mess with, to be honest. <laughs>